The way that family roles and family dysfunction affect addiction and mental health treatment outcomes is profound. If you watch our video underneath the why families, or the excuses families make to not do an intervention in the DIY video, you will see what we're talking about in these family roles. You'll see a lot of the family roles in all the objections, but not, not, never more so than in that one. And the reason why I say that is there's, there's a lot of roles, but there's three that I'm gonna focus on that almost always are the reason why interventions don't happen. And remember, and I say this in all the videos, families make more excuses and have more objections to not help their loved one than their loved one will have for us to not accept the help that we offer. Don't forget that, it's tenfold. It's 10 to one, your excuses versus theirs. So the three family roles that I'm gonna focus on are the enabler, the hero, and the martyr. The enabler almost never wants the intervention to occur for selfish reasons. It doesn't make you bad or wrong. It's a role that you didn't ask for. It's a role you are now, so don't think I'm beating you up. But what your goal is, is to be the caretaker of the enabler or of the substance user. Your role is to be needed in the relationship. Your role is to avoid confrontation. Your role is to keep the person comfortable. Your role is to feel better when your loved one feels better and then of course you'll feel worse when they feel worse. But what most people don't understand is that the enabler has the biggest impact on the overall family system because what happens is, is when the primary enabler gives all their attention to the one person who needs help, all the other people underneath the roof or in the family system suffer and that's when the other roles blossom. And the role that blossoms and sabotages interventions more than anything else is the hero. And the hero role is all over our website. And you always know who the hero is and never more so than when you send an article on the hero and they call the office and scream at us and threaten us and threaten legal action because we just basically describe them to a T. But the hero does one of two things. If they're the original caller, intervention's happening, it's their idea, they're running the show, the hero is the greatest asset to an intervention when they've done their homework, they've made the original call, they found family first intervention, this is their idea. When it's not their idea and any other family member calls, they will destroy this on you. The reason they do that is it wasn't their idea. And, the con and when we do conference calls or family consultations, the hero is so easy to spot because it'd be one of two people. They will sit there and say nothing and when we ask them for input or how they're doing, they'll either say they're good or they're Gucci, almost arrogantly, they say that. And they will wait for that call to end. And as soon as that call is over, they will call everybody that was on that conference call and they will pounce. That guy was an idiot. That guy was a salesman. That place will never work. That place sucks. I, and they will derail everything we, or at least try to anyway. So I'm preparing you now. That's what happens with the silent client on the conference call. The hero can also be the person on the call that overpowers the call has all the objections, all the excuses, and tries to make us look foolish. And they try to jam us up. There are the ones that almost always have all the excuses, objections, as they just said, because this wasn't their idea. Because the biggest fear of the hero, whose drug of choice is perfectionist, they are terrified of two things. Number one, the person who needs help gets better and steals the spotlight from them. And the second is, the other person gets better without them having a hand in the solution. We have clients, I, I want you to put this in their perspective. I have people who have been sober two and three years. The hero still calls our offices and says, we did this the wrong way. Everybody else in the family is happy, the hero's pissed. And the reason why, the, the hero can go to Harvard, get a law degree and an MBA, and be acknowledged a little. The substance user, or your loving with mental health, can have a good day and there's a block party. That's an extreme example, but the hero watching this, who's hating me right now, gets it. Because they're fighting for that primary enabler's attention. That primary enabler has given everything to the person who's failing. So the perfectionist does what? The opposite. They're all getting all this attention for failing. I have to overcompensate. But there's also one other hero that most people don't talk about. It's the one who's also using drugs in the house, just not as much as the one we're intervening on. That guy or girl doesn't want the intervention because God forbid we get the person who's worse than them to treatment, now all eyes on them and they sabotage interventions too. So when you call our office, we can get into more detail, but heroes sabotage interventions and they derail them. And just before I wrap up the hero, I'm gonna give you one example. I had a family that called me back after several conversations. Her and her husband were on the phone. I hope they end up watching this. 
I had my CEO in my office. He heard the call. Mike, it's so and so and so and so. We are ready to move forward. Can you be here tomorrow? They never once told me there was another son. They never once told me he was the oldest. They never once told me anything about this person. I assumed, and, and, and I think even when I had asked them, they said, no, it was just this, ju just the, the one and another daughter. But there was another son, the hero. They said to me, we are ready to move forward. Can you be here tomorrow? And I said, yes. I said, my CEO is in my office. He will call you back. I am not exaggerating. I can pull this call recording. 15 seconds. He walked from my office to his office, which is probably 30 feet away. No answer. No answer. No, never heard from him in three weeks. Do you realize in that, now this is like winning the lotto, in that 15 seconds, their son called, the hero. Just to call, say hi. They told, he exploded this thing and ripped it to shreds. The dad called me back three weeks later and told me what happened. And he turned on me like an enemy. Being his son, the hero, did such a number on, their loved one is still failing per the other family members that still call because this hero, know-it-all brother, in 15 seconds, prevented us from saving his brother's life because God forbid he gets better and takes away his spotlight or God forbid he gets better and it wasn't his idea. There's people watching this and are not gonna like it. They're gonna think I'm being disrespectful. Guys, this is textbook. This isn't my opinion. This is what heroes do. Textbooks are nice about explaining the hero. I'm telling you how they act in real life. They're scary. They're detrimental. They derail interventions unless it's their idea. And lastly, there's the martyr. The martyr is the forever victim. It's almost always a spouse. And their big thing is, if I have to do this intervention, my loved one gets well, then I can no longer be a victim. Who's gonna pay their bills when they're in treatment? What's gonna happen to me? The whole thing about their loved one getting well is what happens to them if they do or they don't. And their biggest fear is if their loved one goes to treatment and let's say it's a wife or a husband, what if they go to treatment and they get better and they don't love me anymore, they don't like me or they find flaw in me? I don't want to say the martyr's job is to keep their loved one sick, but the martyr's job is to keep their loved one sick. And just remember, I'm going to summarize this quickly. Not one of these roles is a bad person. Not one of these roles has ill will intent consciously. And all of these roles, and this goes for the scapegoat, the lost child, the mascot, the other clinical roles, which don't affect the outcomes very much. They try, but not much. That's why we're not talking about them. But nothing derails an intervention more than these family roles. And these family roles don't understand how sick they are. And this is why families with your DIY interventions, we're gonna to talk to them ourselves. You're not doing an intervention. You can't address these without a professional. And if you don't address them, your loved one doesn't stand a chance of having long-term uh, recovery if they're coming back to a dysfunctional family system.